Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Haley Estes. For those that don't know me, I blog at themountainviewcottage.net where I share farmhouse inspired DIY decor and organization videos. Today we are diving back into my introduction to furniture painting series. And this section of the series, I am showing you how to paint furniture to get that really beautiful chippy farmhouse look. This can be kind of difficult to achieve, but with a really simple solution. Milk paint. Milk paint is going to help you get that beautiful chippy look that you're after if that's something that you love or have seen on other pieces of furniture but weren't quite sure how to achieve on your own pieces of furniture. So I'm going to show you all the steps to painting furniture with milk paint for that chippy look. First things first is mixing your milk paint. I'm going to be using the color Farmhouse White by Mrs. Mustard Seeds Milk Paint. I have used her milk paint on countless projects and it is my absolute favorite. Now, I have not tried other milk paints because I've been so satisfied with her brand that I've not felt the need to, but I'm sure there's other brands out there, so don't hesitate to give them a try as well. We are going to mix them in this paint little paint bowl. A lot of times I will mix in a plastic cup, but I like this because it's a little bit wider. The bristles of my brush are not gonna get caught on the edges of a smaller cup causing them to start bending upward, which is something that kind of drives me crazy. <laughs> and then this is just gonna help me get all of the paint and water mixed together. And then I have a pitcher full of clean water. I'm gonna use my 1 4th cup to begin my mixing. And I'm really just gonna start with a really small batch. I have not used this color, and my experience with milk paint has been that different colors apply differently. I want to experiment with a smaller batch so that I can get the right consistency because I know what consistency I like to work with best and I like it a little bit thicker. So I'm just going to very slowly pour in a little bit of water. And then I'm going to just mix it up. Now I put in a little bit more water than I would like. I prefer it to be a more thicker, creamy consistency, almost like the consistency of buttermilk. That is kind of my preferred consistency. This is more like regular milk right now. It's a little more runny than I like to mess with. So I am simply going to remedy that by adding a little bit more milk paint. That's the nice thing about when you mix this, if you mix a small batch, you can easily fix the consistency, whereas if you were to just go ahead and mix the entire bag, you wouldn't be able to fix the consistency because you don't have any more paint. All right, so it is getting a little bit thicker. I am pretty happy with this consistency. It's still a little bit runny, but that is gonna get solved really quickly. My favorite tip I've ever gotten for painting with milk paint has come from Miss Mustard Seed herself, and that is wait for five minutes so that it can thicken up a little bit more before you actually start painting. I've let this sit for exactly five minutes, and you can see that it's now a little bit thicker and kind of that buttermilk thickness that I personally prefer when I'm painting furniture. So the last thing to do is start painting. You just wanna make sure that you mix it up one last time after you let it sit because some of those powder particles will kind of start gravitating towards the bottom. When it comes to actually painting the piece, make sure that your piece is dry and clean. And I always use my favorite paintbrush, which I talked about in another video. I will link it in the description. And I'm gonna paint with the grain all along the top and do a really nice light first coat. For milk paint, it's going to take a couple coats to get full coverage, so just be aware of that and don't expect full coverage when you first start painting. Although I have to say, this is definitely one of those colors that seems to apply really well and be very opaque. Not all of the colors from her line are like that. Sometimes it's just because of the shade of color, such as reds. Reds are one of those colors that 
really take a lot of coats to get full coverage with. This is her new farmhouse white. She made this after her original line of milk paint came out. She has another white called Ironstone, which I have used and I really like, but this has definitely has a much more full coverage consistency, especially when compared to Ironstone. Um, another really pretty white that she offers is Grain Sack. And it has some gray in it. It also even has kind of some neutral yellows in the color. It's a really beautiful color. It's the color that my hutch is painted, which I usually film in front of if I'm talking about something. So you've probably seen it in my other videos. So yeah, just gonna go ahead and apply this entire first coat all along the top. dry like over here versus over here where it's still wet it's not looking as full coverage anymore this is really common and normal for milk paint so it will go on looking like you've got a much more full coverage coat and then as it dries it's a lot lighter so that's okay it'll take a couple coats to get it where we want it and I'm just gonna let it dry and move on to the sides and drawers of the dresser another thing to keep in mind as you paint is just to kind of run your brush all along the edges after you've finished the tops or sides so that if any paint has dripped down you can smooth it out before it dries all the way as you get to the bottom of your paint once you're almost out it does get thicker which is kind of nice. So it will cover a little bit more. So if you have an area that needs a little bit more coverage, wait till you're down to the bottom of this and then cover it and you'll get better results. like this to paint them, especially when I'm leaving the handles on them because that way the paint, when it pulls inside all these details, it won't drip down, it will stay here and I can just easily, easily brush it out with my paintbrush. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint, I'm gonna paint over all of these little details and then I will show you in a later video what I do after I've painted them. Here's what it looks like with all of the first coat on the entire dresser. So I'm just going to let this sit for a minute and let it really dry and once it's dry I will go in with the second coat. Typically I do about three coats on milk paint and in some areas I may do a little bit more than that so I will show you that in just a minute. Here's a close up of what that first coat looks like. You can see the wood grain underneath it. It's still very light and it's not opaque how I would like it to be yet but that's okay. We will slowly build the milk paint on top of it and it will look beautiful when it's all done. Something I also wanna point out, as you go and start painting subsequent coats, as the paint dries, it will begin to chip and peel off. This is exactly what you want to have happen so that you can get that authentic chippy look without having to do a ton of distressing. 
that is totally fine. Don't worry about distressing it as you go or chipping off those pieces that are beginning to chip off on their own. Just paint right over those and don't pay them any mind. And when we get to the next step of distressing, I will show you exactly what to do with those areas. In between coats of paint, I just put my paintbrush in a gallon Ziploc bag to keep it moist and from getting hard as I wait for paint to dry. So this is a little trick that I use every time I paint furniture, really easy. So it's time to go ahead and put the second coat of paint on the entire dresser. The good news is, is that the majority of the work is done at this point. The second coat goes on a lot faster and smoother and it starts to cover and it looks amazing. So let me go ahead and begin that process. Thing. And then if I need to, I will touch up some of the small areas that didn't get as much coverage with a fourth coat. You can see some of the wood grain is still peeking through that stain color underneath, which is why I know that I need to do an additional coat. It's also normal to have some of these paint granules um, on your piece. They'll dry on top, but it won't matter. Once you distress it, it will become smooth again, so don't worry about trying to like brush those off as you're painting, just leave them be. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and you learned a thing or two about painting furniture and achieving that really beautiful farmhouse chippy look if that is something that you're after. In next week's video, I will show you how I distress and chip away those areas that are already beginning to chip away on their own without overdoing it, but getting that really beautiful farmhouse rustic look that we're after. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Have a wonderful day.